We're all, of course, familiar with the story of William Thompson, first Baron Kelvin and his contributions to science. He, of course, like most normal people, was a mathematical physicist and engineer born in Belfast. He was professor of natural philosophy at the University of Glasgow for 53 years and, like most philosophers, studied nothing but mathematical analysis, electricity, formulation of the first and second laws of thermodynamics, much to unify the emerging principles of physics in contemporary forms, like most philosophy students would. You might be familiar with other things that he did, such as the Joule-Thompson effect, the Kelvin temperature rating, the first and second law of thermodynamics. You might also be very familiar with the Kelvin Helmholtz instability. Of course, like any good philosophist would. It's a hell of an intro. <laughs> Today I would like to talk about the Kelvin wire setup or four wire resistance test. As you just heard about Mr. Kelvin, first Baron Kelvin, he did a lot of work for mathematics, thermodynamics, electricity. There's just a lot of things that he contributed, uh, contributed and the Kelvin wire resistance test is one of the most important in my opinion. Uh, of course, thermodynamics is, I guess, pretty important in the world today. But as far as what I use, the Kelvin wire resistance test is extremely easy and accurate to test the resistance of objects of extremely low resistance, especially. And you don't need really fancy equipment. So the basis of it is that we would use Ohm's law. Amps times ohms equals volts. We have it listed a few ways here. Amps, ohms, volts, IRV. Uh, then we flip the equation around to get what we want. In this case, we're looking for the resistance. So it would be amps over volts is equal to one over ohms. You can flip that once again, the reciprocal of both. And what we would get, let's say we measured a 0.02 volt drop across an object and we're passing one amp of current right there. Here it is, amps over volts equals one over ohms. We flip that around for the reciprocal and we get the result of 0.02 is equal to the ohms. And the reason why if we get 0.02 volts on the device and uh, we know that our resistance is going to be 0.02 ohms for the device, it's because I'm passing one amp of current. It makes the conversion really easy. If you need more resolution, you could pass two amps of current and just divide everything by two, or you could pass 10 amps of current, divide everything by 10 if you need more resolution, if it's an extremely, extremely low resistance device. But in most cases, you can pass one amp and get you know, close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. So this is what we use to get the basis of it. And I'm going to use this uh, power supply, benchtop power supply. It's nothing too expensive. I got this probably on Amazon or eBay here. It's a uh, How Fist DC power supply MS 305D. There's plenty of brands of power supplies. There are lots of different qualities of power supplies, but for the most part, the DC uh, amperage regulated versions are going to be pretty close to accurate on amperage. And you could always have a reference if you have a uh, amp available multimeter. You can put it on your amp mode. You can pass one amp through this, short it through the meter. And as long as you don't get the knob over the one amp setting, you're not going to fry your meter unless like this one, it's only good for 400 milliamps. So we're not going to reference this, but what we are going to do is pretend that this one amp going through this power supply is exactly one amp. And as long as we're using the same power supply, we would assume the same reference amperage. And you know, I'm talking about really, really fine amounts here that it's going to be one way or another, but just to let you know, like any test equipment, your reference equipment is probably going to give you a little bit different results than somebody else's reference equipment. But you get a power supply like this, you can go through all of your stuff with the same two pieces of equipment and get a pretty dang precise set of measurements. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two wires to this motor on the tabs. These are our power wires. This is going to pass our one amp of current through the device. We've got to make sure that we don't short these leads out because it'll give us false errors. So we're going to turn this on. Boom. Uh, we're passing about an amp as it warms up. We've got our fine adjustment knob on this particular thing. 
we're just gonna bump that just a little bit until we hit right at one amp, right? You can see the little dot down there is telling us it's listing in milliamps, so 999 milliamps. Come on, just a little more, but just like sneeze on this thing to get it to go. There we go. We're passing exactly one amp through this. And one amp isn't enough to heat up the wires or anything, but you'll notice that the power supply is saying that it's passing 0.17 volts. So we know that the resistance of our entire setup uh, since we're only passing one amps, is 170 milliohms would be one way to put it, or 0.17 ohm is the resistance of our entire situation here. That includes these leads, that includes this motor. Um, if I short this motor lead down, you'll actually see the resistance change. Just a little bit. It went from 0.17 to 0.16, which tells us in this path our motor is not actually a whole lot of the resistance of it. It's, it's barely any, and these wires and maybe even some internals of this machine are adding up to a lot more resistance. That's when our second set of wires come in. So we got one, two, here's three, four. Kelvin wire. We're gonna set this to volts. Make sure that that is legible in the screen up there for you. So right now, I've got it, it, it it's a auto detecting meter and it's on millivolts for the setting. And I can just wave this guy around and you can see it's, it's telling us we got 38 millivolts on this. But if I short the leads together, then bam, it, it pulls down to zero as you can see. Uh, but when, when you're just open air like this, there's you know, EMF coming from everywhere and it's going to just, you know, you wiggle them around and, and it'll change your voltage. So just, it, just as a heads up on how equipment can work sometimes. Um, yeah. So we're now we're going to put these two wires or these two leads onto the point, our solder pins actually coming off the motor and we're going to read the millivolts coming off of it. So this is telling us 19.7 millivolts. We do the conversion that is 19.7 milliohms of resistance in this motor from tab to tab. It's not exactly the phase resistance, but it is from tab to tab resistance inside the motor. That's really low. We could use this formula to work back in the other direction to say, well, what if we passed a volt through it? How many amps would we get out the backside? Um, just good for, for modeling. You could also use this sort of situation to identify better motors in lots. If you're the type that's racing or you know whatever and you're trying to get the edge on it and you have, let's say, 10 motors to choose from, you can choose the ones that have the lowest phase resistance or terminal resistance, technically. Phase resistance is before you combine the phases together. So once more, we're gonna go back to this, bam, uh, 17, or 19.8, 19.7 milli ohms, extremely low resistance that we're getting from this device. But we can repeat this over and over, 19.8, and this is an extremely accurate way of measuring. I, I wanna say that your power supplies may run about 40 bucks for the lower quality ones. You don't need anything that's too much power. I think this one's only limited to five amps on this particular model, um, so, he only need like 10 volts max. I mean, this guy's only passing 0.18, so we obviously don't need 10, but you wouldn't have to have a really wide range power supply. You could get like a 24 volt, five amp unit, and you would have this for your reference all the time. Just any old cheap voltmeter will work for this, and now you can accurately test the resistance of anything, uh, except for batteries. Don't do this on batteries. You're gonna, you're gonna blow stuff up. Uh, so for safety, I turn this off before I take the leads off because otherwise we just have, you know, hot leads, woo, uh, uh, dancing around. So that was a six shooter, 2700 kV. And that gave us, you know, 19, about 20 milliohms. Let's compare this to the 10 shooter model, 2700 kV. That makes our comparisons equal. And we're just going to do this so that you can see that there are differences between motors. All right, so same routine. Power this guy up. Got to turn it sideways there. All right, oh, we got 63 milliohms air resistance. Uh, let's be sure we short these leads down again. Bam, runs right down to zero. We're good. Our voltmeter is still a good voltmeter. So we put nice contact on these 
tabs here, bam. 15.6, 15.7 milliohms. And as we run current through it, the resistance of the motor will go up. You could actually use this to pass more current through it, heat up a motor to a certain temperature and test the resistance reactance of your motor. So, you know, what's our resistance when the motor's hot? What's our resistance when the motor's cold? For drag racing, you would be able to know what's gonna be my difference between a hot motor and a cold motor as far as the amperage that it'll pull. Um, of course, it may be just easier to actually test it in the real world, but it's one way to at least see with your own eyes what happens when the heat of a motor changes. The resistance goes up, as anything does. Resistance and heat, they go together. All right, so 15.7 milliohms for this one. That, uh, the six shooter was, uh, you know, about 20, let's just say 16 milliohms, 20 milliohms for them. Different motor topologies. The 10 shooter has lower resistance than the six shooter. Now, what does that tell us about motor performance? I think that is for another video, but real quick here. Okay, we, we tested this at 16. Let's add in the motor leads to it. Let's just add in these motor leads to the circuit. And I'm gonna test both up here and down at these motor leads. Let's just see if there's any difference. May as well, we're experimenting. This is the best part of it. All right, so power up the power supply again. 16.16 volts. Going through it, what would that be? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. We, we got millivolts. What's above a millivolt? Like a decavolt or something? Or a, uh, a six? Micro? Micro? I think micro is smaller. Yeah. I, I, I don't know about that decimal place. Whatever. 0.16 volts going through the entire system. So same. I'm going to measure up here at the tabs first. And it should be exactly the same as it was before. This is just to show you, you know, repeatability of the setup. Yeah, 15.6, 15.7 millivolts coming across this, which means 15 milli ohms, 15.7 milli ohms as the resistance of the motor here. Now let's go down to these wires and we'll test them at the plug. We're gonna test these right on the bullet plug. So we went from, let's just call it 16 milli ohms and now we are at come on now 18 and some change 18.3 18.4 milli ohms so that tells me that these two wires are about two milli ohms about two and a half milli ohms for these wires which tells me that for one wire since they're running in series is one milli ohm each for each of these wires and for any given six step commutation point you're only going to be uh, conducting through two so at any point in time these are going to give us about two more milli ohms of resistance to our system uh, if we shorten them to half the length it's only going to be one milli ohm that's added to it same for the esc side same for your battery leads etc etc but just to show you that this is powerful enough for us to see exactly what our voltage drop is and also what our resistance is. And for the sake of experiment, I really like experimenting. Now let's just measure the one wire. So our motor is now out of the equation. It's not going to give anything on the resistance test. Get these wires so you can kind of see what goes, what's going on. All right, so we've got one lead right there, one lead right there. We're only measuring the resistance of that motor wire. Turn this back on. It's gonna be passing something, yeah, see much lower now, 0.13. We've taken the motor out of the equation and it's, it's having a current limit by using a lower voltage. All right, so now we're just measuring this across this lead. And yeah, that's, uh, that's showing me, at least for this probe on this lead, we'll make sure we got really good contact. There we go, it's fallen, it's fallen 1.4. 1.4 milli ohms is what it's given measuring it this way. So a little bit different result. You know, we could retest this in a couple different ways, you know, make sure that our, our clamps are nice and solid. Uh, make sure that these guys are on there nice and solid. A lot of times what people will do is uh, actually make a test bed to where these get soldered in to the end of your clips. The resistance of the clips 
is added into your system when you do it that way, when it's a, a two clip, four wire method, but it's a lot easier. I would just put the clips on and bam, I'd get the readout. It, it's really straightforward that way. And what you can do is you can actually measure the resistance of the clips themselves with the four wire method. And then you can subtract that from all of your results to get a pretty close idea of what your resistance is of the system. I tend to do this because I'm always, it, it's always different things that I'm testing and I don't want to constantly have to deal with these clips passing high current potentially more, you know, more than an amp. So doing it this way with a separate meter that is, uh, you know, movable to different positions is a little bit more my style, but you could do that. If you want to know more information about creating your own system, maybe a bench top resistance checker, then put your comments down below. I'll do my best to help you out with it. And uh, yeah, any questions on equipment or something like that? Uh, YouTube's probably going to smash your links and think you're a spammer if you, if you put links in, but any controlled current power supply will work as long as it can pass one amp uh, or maybe two if you want more resolution on your system any controlled amperage power supply, uh, yeah, it's gonna work your job. So there you go. Oh, that answers what a Kelvin wire setup is, showed you how to use it and why it would be useful for you. If you don't get anything out of the video, then let me know in the comments. And if you do get something out of this video, let me know in the comments. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.